Hello, and welcome back to Caves of Cud. How are you doing? Um, we're continuing to explore the swamp, the swampiness. Hello? Okay. Um, in search of a, a shiny glow pad. I know that's uh, maybe uh, a redundant statement, shiny a glow pad. Uh, the glow pads are already shiny. What are you talking about, Bimple? You son of a gun. Well, yeah, I know. I've uh, relied on this um, this trope of a Pokemon shinies to indicate a you know arbitrary rareness or um, you know yeah arbitrary rareness to, to indicate a creature that is very uncommon. There's only one of these creatures, and I will find them. Hello, Why, we can explore something. Oh, okay. I am uh, periodically, if I see a little patch of unexploredness, I will hit the auto explore on the off chance that I've missed it. I'm really, really hoping that the shiny uh, glow pad is going to count as a point of interest and therefore uh, we'll just kind of auto find it. But I could be wrong. That being said, I have been pretty careful to keep an eye out for said glow pad. Uh oh. Oh, never mind. I was thinking, oh, th there's a red glow pad, but that's not what we're looking for. Kindle thumbed glow pad. I think it's funny how um, basically any creature can be Kindle thumbed. Um, so I mean, we've really, we've really kind of destroyed this run, and that's fine. I'm wondering if, if for the sake of, um, getting a couple more achievements and uh, you know ending the run in some fair fashion it wouldn't be a, a good idea to um ruin the run even further how many mutation points do i have not enough not enough all right well that's fine i was thinking you know if we could get precognition what we could do is we could disappoint a, a highly entropic being by um donning the um i always forget what it's called the triangle, you know, the dreaded Dorito, the uh, the infamous and evil Dorito, while using precognition. You can get an achievement, by the way, by doing that. The um, the the dreaded triangle that Mamon Soul Drinker wears, and I, by the way, I will always kind of uh, stress that that moan. It's it's just in my nature. I will always do that. The 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 cursed Dorito that Mamon Soul Drinker uh, wears is one that you cannot take off. You cannot undon it. It's kind of with you forever. Um, and uh, there, there's a lot of different ways that you can try and take it off. Like you can try, like you can't, um, <laughs> it's a floating point. You can't really like uh, chop off your floating point. Like it's, it really is stuck on you. They, and the cud devs are determined to ensure that it, it's on you when you decide to, uh, whether, you know, intentionally or unintentionally in the case of my stream. Um, and, and you can check out the stream highlight in which I accidentally donned the, the, uh, the triangle. I cannot remember what it's called. Adamantine prism or something. Anyway, a legendary glowfish. Uh, this uh, holds promise. Um, there, uh, but if you if you wear it while you're in precognition, meaning you are looking into the future, uh, you can in fact go back in time and unwear it. Uh, but this disappoints the highly entropic beings. I, I just want to double check. I, I I don't feel good not fully exploring the zone. It is, after all, a uh, legendary glowfish, or legend, yeah, le legendary glowfish zone, and so it has a high chance for extra glow pads. I'm really worried we're not going to find this thing. I mean, there's always the next world, the next character, but like, you know, I don't want to have to explore the swamp. X number of times. Our next run will be in Jopa, though. So, uh, you know, we have that going for us, I suppose. I, I, I have the unfortunate duty to uh, disappoint 
at Jopa and all of the Cud fanbase <laughs> by ma making enemies and basically ruin of Jopa. Uh, uh, Jopa is highly loved in the Caves of Cud community, and I don't blame them. Um, it's it, Jopa is one of the the small kindness in in Cud, and uh, it's just like one of the most wholesome little towns, you know. Um, so like. I, f I find it kind of unusual, honestly, to, that there's an achievement that highly incentivizes uh, a player to, to go and destroy it. But uh, who am I to to question these achievements? I do, you know, like uh, the, the, the kind of topic of like player morality has come up a lot both on this uh on my channel and my series you know specifically when talking about caves of cud as well as you know on some of my streams and it's an interesting idea like you know what are we in the salt desert now um what what is the morality of the player does the player have morality morality implies that you are thinking about what you're doing um, I mean, you, we are thinking about what we're doing and, you know, we are highly prog uh, pragmatic about our actions. Um, but like, do our actions actually hold any meaning? Like you, you don't like get an achievement for robbing a bank in real life, right? Uh, I mean, you get the achievement unlocked, go to jail. If there is, uh, any, you know, like... <laughs> If you were to have any faith in in the systems that that would put you there um, One would assume that if you robbed a bank you would acquire the achievement went to prison um, You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get political about it, but um, But like yeah, like the idea of the achievement in terms of the player It just feels so alien to real life it's such a bizarre motivation. Why, you know, what is an achievement? Like, can we talk about what is an achievement? Like, really conceptually speaking, like, really boil it down. What the heck is an achievement? What do you mean an achievement? What does that mean? You achieved. What? <laughs> what did you achieve? Like, it's a, a set of pre-configured, um, not even rewards, statements. You could you could argue that an achievement isn't a reward, but what is the reward in, in, like implies some kind of benefit like that the player or the person has received something. All they received was the statement of the thing that they did. The statement is that they did the thing that they just did and it was a pre-configured statement. You have achieved. You've done the thing. You did the thing that you just did. That was the that's the reward for having done the thing that you just did. What a truly like unremarkable thing, right? And yet that is enough to motivate someone to completely destroy a town. That is enough to motivate someone to play a 60 hour game twice, right? Like, there are people who are so obsessed with achievements just because of that the little slight dopamine hit they get from seeing and hearing that noise. I mean, it really is like um, psychology 101 is you get that, you get the little sound and it's just such, such a slight reward is the sound effect. It really is just the sound effect. And the, the little notification. That's the second reward. So you have audio and visual um, reward, sensory sensory input from the player has received. <laughs> the player has received their daily rationed dopamine hit. Achievement acquired. You destroyed the world. Good for you. It doesn't even say good for you. I don't believe I remember saying. Uh, you know, what's what's the line? That's it, that's it. After forty years. All I, all I get is a, uh, you know, thanks and how you do. And I, I don't believe I remember, recall saying thank, thank you. Hated by roots. Uh, sure. 
Let's be on good terms with Roots. Never mind. We're still disliked by Roots. That's because we're the root of all evil. Oh, God. Please make it stop and end it forever. Achievement acquired. You ruined everything. No, but for real. I mean, achievements are such a bizarre... Uh, I'm going to say it culture. I think that achievements are... Um, like, at this point... They, they are self-contained. They are... Um, established enough to to be called something of a culture achievement culture because there are people who devote such a, an enormous amount of time to acquiring achievements um here, here's a here's a spicy topic maybe i'm going to talk about my steam deck <laughs> because apparently um you cannot like do anything re revolving like valve without someone getting kind of spicy but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna care about that necessarily but i want to talk about um I, I recently installed a enormous amount of emulators yes i am a man of culture uh on my steam deck i have acquired uh many emulators for the purposes of playing illegally pirated content i know how how could you do this simple i trusted you i thought I thought you were better than this. I don't know. I mean, like, I've talked a little bit in the past about how I really, truly do not like um, exclusive or uh, what do we call it? Not exclusive content, but it's like, I like proprietary content. Listen, I don't want to have to pay for Super Mario World again. Like, it's stupid, and, and I don't see why I should ever feel bad about that. There are people who have tried. Legitimate, legitimately tried to make me feel bad because I downloaded Super Mario World. I'm like, you are like, uh, you know, um, freaking what are you? God. What? Not, not Miyazaki. What's his name? Miyamoto. Miyamoto ain't gonna sleep with you, bud. Like, he, he's not gonna thank you. John Nintendo is not going to uh, send you an, uh, they're not even gonna give you an achievement. You're not even going to get the rationed daily dopamine hit from, def you know, like making, guilting someone into buying a, a 30 year old game for the 50th time. And I ain't going to thank you either. Just saying, uh, you know, Simple's getting spicy today. Simple's also referring to himself in the third person and Simple really ought to stop that. But, um, anyway. <laughs> what was I talking about? Listen, um, I recently downloaded a copious amount of emulators and um, wanted to play them on my Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is now officially the best like machine for doing something like that. There are other alternatives and they're nice too, but uh, I have, I'll say I've used a lot of different hardware for, you know, emulating and I like the Steam Deck a lot for it. Um... But when I installed all of these emulators, it was like, hey, um, do you want to also like sign up for emulator achievements? <laughs> like what? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, emulator achievements? I mean, uh, basically you you have Super Mario World, right? Yeah. OK. Well, a lot of people like Super Mario World. Um, and people also like achievements, so there, there's a there's a whole community of people who have gone out of their way. Wow, we just got Reshef lore. Incredible. Um, there are people who have gone out of their way to create, manifest a bunch of achievements for uh, a ton of, you know, ancient games. Because, you know, why not? What a truly and you have to let you you sign up for an account and you can put your your achievements on display in this account and uh, Yeah, it's like, you know, um, I, I jumped off Yoshi halfway across the the gap You got an achievement the bad end of Super Mario World. You are evil the evil Mario um, Well done. Congratulations. Here is your ration to dopamine hit bling That's the sound Mike yeah, go ahead. Sign me up for that, I suppose. Go ahead. I I would like to uh, do that. Is there a legendary horned chameleon here? It kind of looked like it, but 
Couldn't, I could I don't think so. Um, oh, we're at a legendary croc. Yeah, like, just what a truly strange thing that we have done. I say we. I didn't really ask for this. Um, but well, give me one second. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. Um, you know, there was a time when I really, you know, I did care about achievements in a weird, like as much as one, I guess, you know, I'm going to say that that's actually not true. I don't think I've ever cared about achievements as much as one can care about achievements, which is what I was about to say. Uh, I don't think that it is possible for me to care about anything as much as one has cared about achievements because there are people who have like made it their life hard stop period to you know acquire every achievement and uh i think that's kind of absurd um you know like when you talk about like uh, say the xbox the uh, maybe the, uh, is the xbox i think the progenitor of the achievement um you know when we're talking about the xbox maybe the, something like that was achievable haha <laughs> to get every achievement on a single machine uh, or a platform even, because, you know, at the time, um, these these platforms are a lot less accessible to the likes of, you know, uh, indie developers, uh, you know, indie games, um, but just like games in general. And I think that even like game development at the time was maybe a little bit less accessible. Uh, I could be wrong, but it feels to me like Lately, there have been there's been a, a huge explosion of uh, of indies, um, due in part maybe because there is a you know the 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 toolkits have been made a lot more accessible. This is my belief. the 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 tools in which we we make our um, our games. Are, are a bit more accessible. Hold on, I have to find myself back in the swamp again. We're we're kind of running out of swamp. A little bit. I'm also running out of water. Uh, I can always teleport to Deva. I hope Deva doesn't hate me because I um, betrayed uh, the uh, Aborokoru. Ape God. Um. Okay, looking, still looking for this glow pad. Anyway, so here I am. I mean, like, you know, rocking like a hurricane. Um, looking for a shiny glow pad because someone, you know, one of the CUD developers said, hey, you know what would be funny? What? If we put a one... A single one shiny glow pad in the swamp and then made an achievement they say build it and they, and, and they will come you know and I may think that's nothing more could be truer about achievements because you you really just have to say hey if you wander in the desert for you know 600 days uh, you may be gifted with a small rash into dopamine hit of you did the thing and you know what's really dumb? This is like a very luck-based achievement. Um, you Like, someone could get absurdly lucky and find it on their first playthrough. Like, it's not even... Uh, there's nothing skill-based about this. There's nothing um, even really interesting about, you know, the, the acquisition of this achievement. There's not really anything. There, there really is nothing, um, you know interesting about this one it's it's just like hey there it is do you want it go get it search for it uh this is not a criticism by the way i'm not saying don't do this um I, i'm saying that the motivations of the player are truly strange you know uh the the cud devs were like if we put an achievement there someone will do it you know um, 
or will they even like i don't know what, what were the motivations of the developer of any developer uh for putting an achievement in for putting an achievement in for something that was not particularly skill based um is, is it interesting as a player is there lore about this shiny glow pad is there an implication that there are shiny uh creatures is it like what is it where wh where are we what are we doing what is going on i i think it all bears some thought to it <laughs> like for real um i don't know it's just it's a, it's a weird one i can't not think about it I'm looking for a slightly off-color version of a very mundane creature that doesn't really have any weight or um, doesn't have any stakes in CUD. Like, the, there's no glow pad lore, you know? Why a glow pad? Because it was mundane, I think. I honestly think that's the only reason, is because it was mundane. It could have been anything. It could have been a snap jaw. I think the snapjaws honestly have more weight. They have more implied lore in CUD than the glow pads. The glow pads really is just some like flora of the swamp. There's nothing really interesting about them. The only interesting thing about glow pads is they are fairly tanky. And so they can tend to um, kill a lot of creatures. Which is, I think, is an interesting thing about glow pads. Like, you'll you'll see them uh, take out a croc, for example. Like, just absolutely destroy a croc. And, and that's, it's hilarious, I think, to witness a plant just kill a croc. You better not leave. Uh, hated by bales, disliked by roots, disliked by mollusks. Um, I don't have any oil. Alright, well, that's that. Uh, we are very rapidly running out of water. We can sell some, some something to this lad here, though. Uh, let's just go ahead and sell this snakeskin armlet. I'm a little bit sad that this run, uh, this run got ruined. Just a little bit. Okay, we now have enough water to continue looking. It's really, I know it's my fault. I was very excited for more music. <laughs> I am very, I gotta say, I am I'm very excited for more sound effects in CUD. Um, I like the sound effects in CUD. Uh, some of the new sound effects I'm maybe not as big of a fan of, but I think overall it's a win because we're, we're just going to get an absurdly, uh, absurd amount of, of new sound effects that are a hundred percent worthwhile and the sound effects in cud are are generally really good like i think that um you know people people like to say that caves of cud looks like a spreadsheet which i think is just like a hundred percent unfair famished uh, I think that Caves of Cut actually has a great art style, and um, it's one you really only begin to appreciate once you've played other um, traditional roguelikes. Like, you really, if you think this looks bad, you really just haven't played anything that, you know, you haven't, you haven't laid eyes upon the giants that Caves of Cud sits atop, you know? Like, and they're not, not to criticize them, wouldn't dare. Um, actually, I don't think I should have done that. Uh, but like, for real, there, there are some traditional roguelikes that you, you really have to kind of, um, strain your eyes. You have to, you have to get over that, like, initial hump of like, man, people played this game, <laughs> you know, for hours? I, uh, g uh, wow. It's like, um, you know years from now and i mean i say years from now but honestly now not even years just right now there are people there are maybe children there are there are influencers in their early 20s who are going to um look at the original game boy 
the original Fat Lab Game Boy for the first time. Not to make you feel old or anything, but yeah, we're we're get, like we're up there now. They're gonna look at the initial um, Fat Lad Game Boy. It should just be called the Game Lad. Um, and they say oh, people played video games on this. Are you kidding me, though? Wait, I am in the Desert Canyon. I am not where I want to be. I want to be in the swamp. And I mean, like, you're not wrong. You're not wrong to question the uh, ration of that, to be honest. It's uh, not rational. It really isn't. I'm sorry. Like, we, anyone who played on the Fat Lad on the game lad you are um you know like we 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 lived through a time i'll tell you what and uh, you know i think that the gross like what you might call it the nostalgia for the 90s is really unwarranted it really is like why are we nostalgic for the 90s i know there was stuff in the 90s but there's stuff now as well like for real um the, the you know corporate culture and and kind of like marketing towards kids was as as rampant as possible in the 90s and it's not good like i don't know like for real i don't know why we're so cool with this like why are people why are we like so stuck in the 90s people are like oh man i miss i miss gi joe i miss uh, you know, Transformers. I'm like, yo, my dude, my dude. Really? Transformers? Um, like, not saying you can't enjoy it, and I'm sure, you know, like, I know that the, it's like, there are certain things that are better than they have any right to be. You grew up with them. I'm not, I'm not gonna take that away from you or anything. But, like, also, that stuff was meant to sell a toy. You know, like, um, it bears mentioning that some of the stuff, some of the stuff we have nostalgia towards, that is like 100% manufactured nostalgia. It is manufactured nostalgia. Like, that's the best way to look at it. Like, someone went out of their way to plant this in your brain. Like, it really is the most, you know, spoon-fed, test-tube baby stuff you can imagine. The entire culture of that era was manufactured. It was, like, beamed into your brain. I mean, like, it, it, you know, I'm going to sound like some kind of tinfoil hat wearing goon, but for real, like, a lot of the things that uh, millennials, I'm speaking as one, have nostalgia towards are... Is manufactured nostalgia. Someone spoon-fed that nostalgia into your mouth hole and, and made you feel the feelings that you have. They, you know, like, and nothing I, I say can ever take that away from you. You, you know, it's the closest thing to our, like, evangelist indoctrination we can get to. And I know this is like, what the hell is simple talking about at this point? It's like, for real, like, you know, um... We, we are, we're at the point now where, like, some people have faith. We had purple ketchup. And, and there are people who are really, really, like, invested in that purple ketchup. They are just 100%. Because, because a clown gave, put a toy in my lunch, I now have an undying and unwavering faith towards the McDonald's cheeseburger. That clown put that toy in there for me, and and I will I will thank them till my dying breath. And you know what? How, who am I to question your lord? <laughs> that that clown is quite the beast. I wouldn't I wouldn't tangle with that clown. I I wouldn't dare. They they have powers that I. That, keep me up at night and put fear in my soul never mind the clown there's a much bigger beast honestly and that's the mouse 
Let's talk about the mouse. The mouse has been beaming nostalgia into into our grandparents' eyes. Like that's that's a that's a that's a deep and dark magic that I can't uh, comprehend. I mean, the the mouse is at this point likened to some kind of deep eldritch creature. I, I can't like the amount of wild and crazy damage that uh, Disney has like done to creative uh, output it, it is kind of uh, unparalleled it is unparalleled like there's nothing no one can compare like achievement unlocked you destroyed creative integrity it's it's gone forever <laughs> we can't uh, basically you know like we just got winnie the pooh back that's cool um but there's like there's so many uh, things that basic can that are untouchable now because of the the copyright laws that Disney helped put in place. And I mean, I, I I'm now committed to this is just the political episode. Can't do anything about it. This is what happens when I look for a shiny glow pad for uh, actual hours now. Technically two hours, so you know I, I can pluralize it. If I so wish. Yeah, this is what happens. Uh, Bim Bimple, Bimple gets becomes political when he is forced. I just realized that glow pads are actually easier to see at nighttime. That makes sense because they glow. Still looking for this glow pad, not finding it. Running out of swampland rapidly. Not a lot of swamp land to speak of left in this world because the mouse turned it into a theme park. <laughs> uh. Sorry, I'm uh, trying to eat food. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. Um, I have a little bit of swamp land left. To search but I, 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 I have a horrible feeling either I've missed the uh, glow pad or I uh, or it's dead like th there's always that option that the glow pad just like died as soon as I entered the tile because there were things fighting it but yeah anyway if you somehow enjoyed this like raving episode of uh caves of cut uh then maybe you want to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like the uh, like this and hey here's your um daily rationed dopamine hit achievement unlocked hey thanks you thanks you for subscribing to my content and also if you want another achievement maybe you could check out my coffee and help support me like the wonderful wonderful supporters of uh, this channel, the people, the, the golden simpies that have uh, helped support me in this venture of uh, becoming some kind of weird influencer. Appreciate you, bud. Um, I'll try to do you proud and uh, see you guys next time. Take it easy. <laughs>